Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. Our paper is about the blue carbon stacks assessment of Thalasia himprachai in selected sites of Bujada Bay, Philippines. So, uh, a lot of studies have been done. Uh, different studies have been done about blue carbons and it is already uh, proven or it's been done that all the coastal ecosystem have this uh, can capture carbon such as in the seagrass meadows, mangroves, salt tidal marshes as explained earlier. So why we study uh, blue carbons in seagrass because we have this uh, a lot of resources in our area, uh, very abundant Talasia himprachai, and we be, we explore uh, the potential of Talasia himprachai in sequ uh, carbon sequestration. So, our study uh, is uh, was conducted in a very short. Uh, period of time with our undergraduate students, but however, uh, with this data results uh, that we have in this study would really help a lot in the management uh, by management of the coastal ecosystem of our locality through uh, submitting it to the local uh, policy body makes uh, extend some uh, regulation on the management of our seagrass ecosystem. So the objective of the study is to aim to conduct carbon inventories of Talasia beds in Pohada Bay. Specific stud objectives is to identify the concentration of carbon stored in specific parts of Talation in Prachai, the leaves, the rhizomes, and the roots, and to determine the carbon stacks present on Talation in Prachai at three selected sites in Pujada Bay, as well as to note some of the environmental parameters affecting carbon sequestration of Talasia in Prachai. So, the study area, so this is the Okay, so the Pohada Bay, ah, here, sorry. <laughs> Pohada Bay is located at the southeastern part of the Philippines, one of the island, a big island in the Philippines, the Mindanao. So we have this bay, Pohada Bay is a protected area, and we established three sites wherein uh, one is a pristine area which is in Guanguang. You can see the, the abundance of the seagrass there with the mangroves. And the, the other two is on the resort areas. We have two uh, beach resorts and we expect some of the uh, influence of uh, anthropogenic activities within the coastal ecosystem. So this area is also... Um, one of the key biodiversity area uh, cited by uh, UNESCO uh, because adjacent to this is the newly uh, installed as uh, one of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Mount Hamigitan, wherein most of the programs that we do in our agency is the ridge to reef approach because Whatever activities that we have in the mountains is always the coastal is being affected. Okay, in data gathering, we collect seagrass uh, samples and preparation. We base the method of the works of Fukuran et al. and uh, Yamamuro. Then also on the analysis of carbon sequestration. So, very simple, we do collect samples, then clean, back. 
clean, then rinse and wash running water and make sure that epiphytes will be removed and the sediments. So of course, we sort the above ground and the below ground parts for biomass, oven drying, and then for results, carbon concentration for seagrass part. You can see in the table, yeah. Yeah. you can see in the table that it's station two, which I showed earlier in the pristine area, have higher uh, values compared to the other two where the resorts, beach resorts are established. Next, for the carbon concentration per seagrass part, of course, it follows. So, the, you have here the leaves, then the rhizomes. We measure the leaves, the length and the width of the leaves and the rhizome, and we can observe a bigger values in the rhizome. So, total blue carbon, you can see that in Badas, the first station stores the smallest carbon uh, relative to the small sizes of seagrass part. Then the resort is not a well-managed resort in that particular station compared to Gregorio, which is the study three, as shown in this uh, figure. So, this one is the pristine area and there is two resorts, which is in Station 1 and Station 3. So total blue carbon, the carbon stocks of Talasia in three selected sites. Uh, we also uh, collect data on the shoot density and percent cover. So we have, oh, we have here, so which complement to the uh, results of the total carbon on the shoot density as well as the percent cover. There are more uh, thalacia himperchai in this study area. So for environmental parameters, uh, we only uh, have this temperature salinity for as a basic information. We limit to that. We are limited to that. And then uh, other environmental uh, parameters, we note that the uh, through ocular observation as the parameters that influence the growth and development of Thalassia. So, in Badas, in Station 1, it has a sandy silty which is near the shore, and in Gongguang, uh, found to be the sandy rocky, sandy muddy substrate which is near the mangrove forest. And the station tree is uh, having a muddy sandy substrate. So, as a summary, this research found potential seagrass, uh, which is the Thalassia himperchai, as a good contributor in climate mitigation. And this species can store and sequester significant amount of carbon with, within their ecosystem. So we use the methods of uh, adapted the methods in the blue carbon manual. Then the results showed that rhizomes uh, have the largest concentration. Coming next with the leaves and then the roots. So it's in Guangguang that has stores the largest carbon stacks with 110 grams per meter squared followed by the third station and the first station, which is only 43 grams per meter squared. So carbon stacks uh, difference was associated with its sizes and its abundance in the area. So the three selected sites store significant large amount of carbon per square meter, and the topography where the seagrass situated uh, such as affected by human intervention found to have influenced the growth and development of this species. So that the environmental parameters such as the temperature, the salinity, and depth were noted and recorded in each site. 
So substrate were also noted through ocular inspection only. So the analysis proved that uh, Talasia in Pujada Bay found to be very essential in stacking carbon that if managed properly can be a great carbon pool that efficiently contributes in climate change mitigation. So for conclusion, we have a total carbon uh, highest in Guangguang and the other environmental parameters. Recommendation, so verification studies is needed uh, with regards to the results that we have and to conduct further related studies, not only in seagrass ecosystems, but other blue carbon ecosystem within the area, such as the mangroves ecosystem. So to have careful management plan in Talasia hemprichai and the other species of mangrove ecosystem in the area and conduct seagrass biodiversity assessment as well as uh, abundance in the locality. Of course, uh, we need also to have uh, strengthen the IEC, especially with the policy making body of the locality. Uh, here, Daghang Salamat, which is thank you very much. Thank you, Leah. Uh, I think for some questions. Any? Yeah, there. Talking about storage, it's a sterile term without context. In the context of the mitigation of climate change, greenhouse gases, if you're produced, if you're, there's a component outside produced like black carbon or microplastics or even phytoliths, or these very allotment cancers outside the system, are trapped into the seagrass or mangrove system, you do not need the whole protection of burial. Therefore, you must subtract that component part from your total organic carbon. Yeah. The question is, is that what is the actual map of these options for categories in these systems? And I've been banging this for saying for the last couple of years at conferences to try and get into this system. We just published a paper in Nature Scientist Report in February on that, and I hope to, uh, to reiterate that with some more data to try and get people to think of this concept which needs input into the blue carbon conceptual model. Because as you know, without a good uh, conceptual science and the science to be correct, the markets, which is the ultimate one component, will not take it up. It will not be, we need to have look at the actual conceptual model and the implicit assumptions instead of continuing and moving on to good valuable stuff and looking at variability. But this is a bias which variability cannot take into account. So I'm sorry about that being a bit of a say there, but I had to say right. this was continuing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Y yes, sir. I hope that will be settled because in, in our country, in the Philippines, we've been forming networks. We, we have this blue carbon network from the different islands, from the different regions. So maybe we have to really settle this issue because we just follow the, the manual, the blue carbon manual. So that's a good, uh, I think this is a right venue that we have to settle. So it will not be wasted. For us, we're just starting. We're just a small college, and we're just starting, and we want to start it right. Right. Thank you.